Hi, Debbie here, and thank you for joining me as I experiment with watercolouring with Distress Inks. You may well know if you've been around here for a while, but I have a love of watercolouring, and I'm excited to use any medium from inks to pencils to pens and to artist quality tube watercolours. I must admit, having the artist watercolours in their palette next to me, I often reach for these first. However, in doing so, I rob myself of a learning experience using other media. Today I chose to reach for my tins of mini Distress ink pads. I don't have all the colours, but I do have a fair few. I switched to the mini size a few years back and never regretted that decision. I keep the ink pads in the Tim Holtz storage tins and I've separated the colours into seven tins. These tins take up very little space and yet inside I have a myriad of different colours to choose from. I picked the Springbird stamp and dies from Sam Stamp's new Hello Beautiful release. If you pop on over to my blog, I'll leave a link in the description below, then you'll find more details of the new release. For today's card, I paired the spring birds with the Bitty Birdhouse die set as I thought they made the perfect pairing. I used Archer's Cold Press watercolour card and pulled a sheet from the pad and then trimmed it down to fit in the Mini Misty. I aligned a couple of the stamps from the spring bird set on the piece of card and stamped them in antique linen distress ink. I really should do a Desert Island Supplies video at some point and include the supplies I'd want with me if I was stranded on a desert island. Antique Linen Distress Ink would certainly be on my list as I use it all the time for no line painting, distressing edges and such. I have a jar of clean fresh water, a size 2 round synthetic paintbrush, although I also used a smaller brush for the finer details. But before I get to watercolouring, I drew in the eye of the bird with a black permanent micron pen. I knew I'd want the eye to be a deep black and this is the best way to do that before losing where the eye is situated once watercolouring starts. I used the Tim Holtz glass mat as my palette. On this mat there is a white area with a grid just perfect for squidging ink from the mini ink pads on too. These are the colours I first thought about using, although I added a few extra as I went along black soot and barn door being notable mentions. I started with the leaves on the branch as leaves are my comfort zone for painting. I used a combination of iced spruce, peeled paint and rustic wilderness, although when I added the branch in walnut stain and let the ink seep into the wet area of the leaves, you get an added depth of colour to the leaves too. Distress inks are dye-based inks and as such they give beautiful translucent colours which are lovely to mix and layer over one another. I do find that the ink seems to grab the watercolour card quicker than with paints, and so I was careful to use lots of water and make sure everything kept moving as I wanted it to. I used two different camera angles while filming. I left the overhead camera zoomed out so you can see the squares of ink that I'm using, and then I had another camera over my shoulder which was zoomed in so that you can see more clearly and up close. I'd like your thoughts if you had time to leave a comment as to whether you like the two angles. I planned on using the dies for these images and so I had to be careful to stick within the lines or else the dies would no longer fit correctly. Often I can get a little carried away. That's the joy of using antique linen distress ink for no line watercolouring though as it blends so easily with the water media that if you go outside the lines it doesn't matter. However when using dies you don't want to go freehand or embellish too much. I'll play some music for now so that you can enjoy the painting and I'll be back shortly.
For the background, I used a piece of Archer's Cold Press Watercolour Card and Speckled Egg Distress Spray Stain, along with a water spritzer. As it turns out, I still had leftover ink on my mat, and so I dipped into the puddles of wet on the mat and also picked up those colours. And I love this happy accident. I used the following technique the other day and love the details and texture. And so I repeated the process of adding Distress Crackle Texture Paste through a stencil. This time I used the new Spring Boho Circle Stencil and I think the subtle flowers and leaves design is a great combination for the spring birds. I used a palette knife to spread the thick mousse-like medium through the stencil design and then as I am impatient I dried with a heat tool to reveal the crackle. To add more interest and layers to the background I splattered with white wash, perfect pearls and speckled egg distress spray stain. I also picked up some walnut stain ink from my palette on the right and added that too. I like when darker colours seep into the cracks of the crackle and emphasise the texture. I glued the red roof and circle border to the birdhouse with Gina K Connect glue and then added foam squares to the back of everything. The foam squares on the back of the birdhouse kept in place a circle die cut representing the opening to the birdhouse. With everything put together now I added a little more depth to the birdhouse and then used a guillotine to trim the background panel to be slightly smaller than an A2 card. At the same time I also cut and scored an A2 card base from Nina Desert Storm card in the sturdy £100 weight. I attached the background panel to the card base with foam tape and then followed up with the Spring Birds and Bitty Birdhouse die cuts. The Bitty Birdhouse dies do come with a ribbon die for attaching the birdhouse but instead I used a piece of twine tied into a bow and kept in place with a glue dot. Another desert island supply for me is a Faber-Castell polychroma pencil in dark sepia. I love adding a few deep dark nooks and crannies with this pencil. It really helps to add contrast and a few details like accepting the wood button detail on the birdhouse. For the sentiment I recently got these Tim Holtz label stickers in a card kit and I loved the nod to the old Dymo labels. I added a couple of foam squares one end and one foam square the other to equal out the levels when adding the label overlapping the birdhouse. I added a few lucky clover sequins and eggshell pearls kept in place with Gina K Connect glue and the aid of a Marvi jewel picker. I was still fiddling with this card right to the end, adding final touches with a dark sepia pencil and a little more colour from the Distress Inks. So there you go, my version of using Distress Inks to watercolour. I know watercolouring isn't for everyone, but I encourage you to have a go with whatever water-based medium you have to hand. I hope you find your own watercolour journey to enjoy and inspire you. Okay, that's me for today. I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used, as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at limedoodadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And before I go, here's a couple of videos I think you also might like. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.